Okay, now we pass to the third part of this chapter. In this section, we're gonna focus mainly on the laws of connections. Now, before we start with the laws of connection, I would like to go back a bit to the previous section because we ended up quickly a bit. We need to review basic ideas that we have covered in the previous session and we continue. So, first of all, what we're gonna cover in this session is the laws of connection, as we said, about uh, connection uh, concerning voltage and concerning current. Okay, before we start, as I told you, let's go quickly over uh, this video which summarizes what we have seen so far. Okay, the video is taken from EduMedia. Let's watch the part that is uh, something we've seen before. I'll pause a bit and we'll introduce the new section for today. An electrical circuit is made up of components linked to each other by electric wires. The objective is to transmit the energy contained in the movement of a large number of electric charges to a receiver. This movement of electric charges is called an electrical current. An electrical current flows if at least one of the components of the network is a generator. Furthermore, the circuit must form a closed path through which a charge can flow and return to its starting point. The opening and closing of the circuit can be controlled with a special component, the switch. Disconnecting a conductor anywhere along the circuit has the same effect as opening the switch. Circuits come in all sizes and shapes. The loop of the circuit can be only a few millimeters in the case of integrated circuits, for example, or several kilometers for the electrification of a train. In every case, there is a path for the return of the current. To standardize the representation of electric circuits, a symbol is associated to each element of the circuit. Here is the standard diagram of the initial circuit. Let's imagine now that we want to connect a second light bulb. We can put two light bulbs on the same branch. Or we can put them on two separate branches. Okay, before we continue, let's pause a bit. So far you have seen the symbols or the schematic uh, representations of uh, circuit components, generator, lamp, connecting wires, and stuff like that. We also have seen previously uh, the laws of uh, connections, in fact, the two types of connections, this type which is called series and the other type which is called parallel. Now, we're going to introduce the laws governing these two types of connections. Not only that, we talked a bit about the electric current in a circuit, it flows as a unit. We need the whole circuit to be closed all together so that the current flows as one unit. Now, I disagree with one point, it's not a whole disagreement, in this video, if you remember, they said the flow of charge and electric current. Now, we know that in electric circuits filled with wires or made up of wires, the charge carriers are the electrons. The flow of the electrons is always opposite to the flow of the current or the direction of the current to be more specific. Okay, so what they're saying here is correct, definitely. Nevertheless, if you want to be accurate, we know that in an electric circuit, we have two types of flaws. The first flow is the flow of the electrons, which is from the negative to the positive through the circuit. And opposite to that is the electric current, which is by convention from positive to negative in the circuit. Now, we'll continue watching this. I won't give any comment about the remaining part because this is going to be covered during this session. In the first case, we say that the light bulbs have been connected in series. They have one terminal in common, and the current that flows through the first light bulb is the same as the one flowing through the second one. If the filament in one of the light bulbs is broken, the current is blocked in the whole branch, and the other light bulb is turned off. In the second case, the light bulbs are set up in parallel. The charges can take two different paths, and the current in each light bulb can be different. If one of the light bulbs is faulty, the other one continues to light up. 
Lamps in a house, like trains on the same railway line, are connected in parallel. Okay, that's it. So yes, we're going to talk about the behavior of current and voltage in the two types of circuits, series and parallel. Now, before we go there, we'll solve an application which summarizes the ideas we have seen so far. Again, when we start with current in series and current in parallel, all the terms that we might need should be clarified before we start. Given a circuit that is composed of a battery delivering 9 volts and a lamp carrying the inscriptions of 9 volts. A multimeter is used to measure voltage. The lamp functions normally. Why? Why would the lamp function normally under these conditions? The multimeter is used to measure the voltage, as we mentioned before, across the lamp and to give a positive value. We talked previously about the connections of voltmeters and ammeters. So how should we do this? Show the connections needed. How should we connect this multimeter to read a positive voltage? Then the ranges or the scales found on the multimeter or the voltmeter in this scenario are available are 2 volts, 10 volts, 20 and 200 volts. Which of these is the most convenient? Which range is the most suitable for this measurement and why? Now writing the answer here. Okay, first taking the pen and choosing blue. Okay, part A, part 1 in fact. Why does the lamp function normally? To answer that question, it's simple. If I go back to the question itself, okay, the lamp functions normally, why? Why would the lamp function normally? Anytime you need to answer these questions, always start by checking the question itself. The answer is always found there. So you check this. The inscription of the lamp. What does inscription mean on a lamp, on a load? The inscription is the voltage needed by a load to function normally. And according to our uh, ideas, our level of course in grade 9, all we need to worry about is the voltage delivered to that lamp. So yes, since the generator is giving 9 volts, the battery in this case, and the lamp needs 9 volts, so it's, it's Levy and Rose, it's the best, best scenario that you can think about. So how would we answer this? Simply, since the lamp has a rated voltage, a rated voltage of how much? Of 9 volts and the battery supplies 9 volts as well. Okay? Okay, this is just one term, it's fine. The second question, going back. The multimeter is used to measure the voltage. Show the connections. If you notice, I've kept this figure here so that I just uh, make uh, use of some time. Part 2. How should I connect the multimeter so that it functions as a voltmeter and reads a positive value? First, I need to choose the V and the COM, because it's a voltmeter, and it should be connected in parallel. One more thing, the COM should be closer to the negative side. So let me write these, and then I'll come back to the figure. So, first, use the V and COM, okay, connect it parallel to the lamp, parallel to the lamp and last but not least come closer to the negative okay now if you'd like to write this in a better language uh, sentence as one statement revealing these three points go ahead and do it it's fine i've written it here as points so that when you review this, you know that it is important to mention or to think about these three steps. The outlets used, which uh, 
points or uh, exits should we use here, the COM V and A? How should we connect it? And where should we place the COM? So taking a line, a wire from the COM, connecting it to the closer, the side closer to the negative, then using the V to the other side, and that's it. Okay? Last question, part three. Okay. The ranges available are 2, 10, 20, and 200. Which one is the most convenient? We said that the best range, the best range is the closest one above the measured value, above, between brackets, larger than, okay, the measured value. Now, we are measuring here, we are measuring here 9 volts, right? We have 20 is acceptable, 10 is acceptable, 200 is, accept is acceptable, but the most suitable one is, so I'll just slash it here, so use the 10 volt range, okay? Again, if you'd like to write it in a different way, feel free to do it. You are not obliged to write the same way I'm doing. Each person has their own language, okay? So this is an exercise focusing on the main ideas we have seen in the previous uh, parts, parts one and two. In part one, we just talked about generalities, part two about measuring tools. Now we move to the laws of connection, series and parallel. Let's go ahead. Okay, the laws of voltage. So it's broken up, laws of voltage. The first section is how does the voltage behave or how do we treat voltage in different types of circuits. First, the law of unity of voltage in parallel. From the title, you notice that, as if I'm telling you now, that when the connection is in parallel, voltage is unique. So you can always memorize these things, okay? The law of unity of uh, voltage in parallel, then use it to generate your own mathematical relation. In parallel connection, the voltage across different branches is unique, is the same, is equal. Anything can be used. If you look at the figure here, let's move away. In this figure here, we have lamps 1, 2, and 3 are in parallel. Why? Because if you remember, we have splitting at a point and rejoining at another. So we have parallel connection. In parallel connection, voltage is unique. So consider the circuit shown in this figure, which I'm blocking right now. It's okay. Now, what do we have here? We have lamps L1, L2, and L3 are connected in parallel across points A and B. If you remember, I told you, when you mention, when you have parallel connection, it's better that you mention across which points. Why is that? Right now, you'll see. Then, voltage 1, U1, and if you use V at your school, feel free to do it, it's fine. Equals U2, equals U3, equals UAB. It's very important to link the voltages here to the branches, to the uh, terminals, the points across which the lamps are chosen and connected. Law of addition of voltage in series. We finished in parallel. Notice they always alternate. If in parallel voltage is unique, now in series voltage is going to be additive. In a series connection, voltage across appliances is additive. How's that? If you check this circuit again, lamps one, two, and three, which are connected in series, okay, one terminal of a lamp is connected to the second terminal. If you remember the short video, they said they are connected from one side only, okay? That's also a nice uh, idea to see and check whether we have series or parallel connection. So, these three lamps are connected in series across the same wire, along the same wire, in fact. So the, their voltages is additive. What does that mean? Simply voltage one plus voltage two plus voltage three equals voltage main, total. Main or total, feel free to do it. Another way of writing, which is also simple, is this, using the circuit points. Instead of saying U1 or U of lamp one, all you can do is UAB plus UBC plus UCD equals UAD, okay? 
as if they are, as if you are just following a chain where the first name ends, the second name starts. A, B, B, C, C, D, giving A to D. Okay? We, uh, this is called using circuit points. So this law is the law of addition of voltages in series. Before I move to current, let's recall. In parallel, voltage is unique, while in series, voltage is additive. Now, what happens to current? Always keep that in mind. If you just know one of these laws, you can always generate the other three. Law of addition of current in parallel. Okay, again, if we connect appliances and lamps here in parallel, what happens to their current? Lamp 1, lamp 2, and lamp 3 are connected in parallel to each other. So the current flowing or reaching point A, as current reaches here, current, if you recall, is the quantity. Yes? So that quantity of charge would split from here, here, and here. Then the same quantity will rejoin. Okay? So, current in parallel is additive, meaning the current flowing from A to B in general is simply the current 1 plus current 2 plus current 3. Mathematically speaking, I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals I total or IAB. Okay? We call this the law of addition of current in series. You might name it at your school as the junction rule. It is not wrong. However, for the level of grade 9, it's enough if we call it addition of current in parallel. Okay? If you use the junction rule, it is the idea of as the current reaches or enters A, it's not stored there, it needs to exit. So the current entering A is equal to the sum of the currents leaving A, I1, I2, and I3. Okay? Now, proceeding. In uh, series, current is unique. So the law of unity of current in series. In series connection, the current flowing in the, uh, all devices or loads is the same, meaning, first let's look at the figure and think about it. When the current flows here, it's quantity of charge flowing, yes? The same flow is going to flow here, and the same flow also continues towards L3. So that's why, if you think about it logically, the amount of charge flowing shouldn't change. No charge is going to be stored in L2. No charge will be stored in L3. All the charge entering one is going to exit it, then enter two, then enter three. So that's why we say mathematically, I1 equals I2 equals I3 equals I main. Again, you can use circuit points and say IAB equals IBC equals ICD. So these are the four laws of the connections. Again, if you just memorize one, which is, let's say, uh, voltage in series is additive. Directly, in parallel, voltage will be the opposite. If not additive, it's uh, unique. Now, if voltage in series is additive, then current in series is unique. Okay? You can always generate them from each other. No need to memorize the four terms. One is enough, and you can generate the others as you like. Okay? Not only that, Writing a statement about this isn't very important unless your school demands that. So if your school or your teacher demands that you memorize a certain form of the statement, definitely we have to respect their uh, uh, request, okay? That's all. So concerning laws of connections, we have series, we have parallel, we have voltage, we have current. It's important to know these before we go into any exercise. Now, one more note before I go to an exercise, which is about the circuit and its type. We said previously that the switch controls the circuit. The switch can either be open or closed. So this le uh, leaves me with three types of circuits. In fact, two types and one additional. I'll give this as a remark. Then we go to check our understanding with an application. Okay, a closed circuit. A circuit is referred to as closed if it contains a switch which is closed, thus current can flow through the circuit smoothly. And don't forget that current flows as a whole in the circuit. When this current flows in the circuit, it flows in the switch, the lamp gives light, and everything is going to be fine. In this scenario, the switch 
behaves as a connecting wire and it takes no voltage. So keep that in mind. In a closed circuit, the switch is closed, so current can flow easily, and the lamp takes the voltage of the generator, normal, because the switch takes zero volt. Over here, we have explained this, a closed switch. I of the switch is equal to I of the lamp, is equal to the I of the generator, because it's in series, and that value is not zero for sure, because there is some current flowing. Voltage of the switch is zero, it's closed, so it acts as a wire. So, the voltage of the lamp is that of the generator. Because, you know, in series, the generator gives its voltage the whole circuit. The whole circuit is just the lamp, so the lamp takes the whole voltage. In an open circuit, an open circuit contains an open switch. Now, this is something we need to talk about a bit more. When the switch is open, then directly the branch where it is, it is connected has no current in it. Okay? So, when the switch is open, current is going to become zero. Now, over here we have one simple loop. We don't have uh, like complicated branches. Okay? If we have complicated branches, then the current in the branch where the switch is open becomes zero. Okay? Now, current is zero. Voltage of the lamp is zero. There is no current traversing the lamp, so there is no energy, using the voltage definition, there is no energy consumed by anything within the lamp. Charge flowing in the lamp, there is no charge flowing. To talk about energy, okay? So yes, when there is no current, I can't talk about energy anymore. So no current flowing here, definitely I cannot talk about the voltage of this uh, device which consumes electricity. On the other hand, the switch is open. There is no current flowing through it, for sure, but the switch is just connected from one side to the battery, and the other is indirectly connected to the battery. So the switch takes the whole voltage. وعلى فكرة, هيدي ريمارك كتير مهمة. إذا أنت بالبيت عندك فيشة كهرباء أو طافي اللمبة ما فيك تيجي تمسك الفيشة حتى لو طافي اللمبة لأنه اللمبة هي مطفية In fact, the switch is taking all the voltage وكهرباء البيت 220 فولت يعني كتير خطرة So, حتى لو نحنا مش مسكرين أو مضوين الضو ما فيك تيجي تمسك الكهرباء اللي فيتة على فيشة الكهرباء اللي جاي على اللمبة لأنه even if it's open بتكون هي أخدة كل الفولتج Now, when it is closed Okay, the switch ما عم تاخد بس كمان ما فيك تدقرها Okay That's very dangerous لأنه انت عم تدقر شي فيه كهرباء and your body is a good conductor to a certain extent electricity might flow through your body Okay So the rule is that when a switch is open, it takes the voltage of the branch where it is. Over here, since the switch is connected across the generator, يعني it takes the voltage of the generator itself. Okay? That's concerning the open switch. So, as for the switch, we have two types of circuits, open circuit and closed circuit. Now, there is a third type of circuit which has nothing to do with the switch, and this is the short circuit. Short circuit has some application in our life. I'll tell you about it later. Okay? A short circuit is simply connecting or coupling, we call it. Connecting a wire across a load. Or coupling a load, a wire by a load. Okay? So over here we have the lamp. Add a wire across the lamp. Electricity or electric current flowing here reaches this point and continues from here. Okay? عطول بخدها اكزامبل انا ماشيين نحن على اوتوستراد كتير عريض واسع وماشي حاله وصلنا على محل الاوتوستراد فصل بمحل عندك اوتوستراد مكمل ما في عليه سيارات وبمحل تاني عندك زروب في عندك كم حجر عليه اوكي هيدا الزروب اللي في حجارة على الارض وطريق مش كتير منيحة is the one with the lamp because the lamp has some resistance against current so when the current reaches here بيجرب يروح من هون But it can't because the lamp is resisting that even slightly. On the other hand, the wire doesn't resist. So yes, all the current flows here. In this scenario, all current flows in the wire. It continues to the lamp and back to the circuit. Yes, because the circuit or the, uh, the current uh, behaves as one unit in the whole circuit, right? So in this scenario, lamp one will turn off, but it's not broken. It doesn't turn 
off because any damage happened to it, simply because no electricity is flowing through it. Electricity is bypassing it by this wire. This happens a lot in our houses. Sometimes, for example, you turn on the TV or the uh, uh, washing machine or anything else, and by accident, you touch it by your hand. What happens is that electricity, instead of flowing in that device, it chooses a better path, which is your body. So you get electrocuted. That's one of the examples. Okay? Now, so in this scenario, what happens? The lamp turns off. The current flowing through the lamp also becomes zero, uh, while lamp two takes all the voltage of the generator, and also it takes uh, all the current delivered by the generator. So that's what we can say here. Current in the device is zero, IL1 is zero. All current flows through the wire for sure, and voltage across the wire is zero, thus voltage of the lamp is zero. Over here I used an approach of the parallel connection. Okay? So that's all concerning laws of connection, whether series or parallel, voltage or current, and the three different types of circuits. Okay. Now, we have this application here. I'll just post it now, but you will find the solution in the upcoming session. I want you to try, take a look at this and try to solve it. I'll move a bit away and we'll pause the picture a bit. Read it and try to solve it on your own. Don't rush to scroll to the second session to find the solution. Check how much you have grasped from the session. Okay, and if there are any comments or anything which, is, uh, which are a bit unclear, don't hesitate to write that in the comment box. Okay? Thank you for your time. In the upcoming session, we'll try to end this lesson with an application and with the last uh, final idea we're gonna, we have to cover. Have a nice day.